So here we've got uh, chapter number 16, and uh, talks about uh, managing uh, retailing, wholesaling, and uh, logistics. And in this chapter, uh, we're discussing those four questions. Number one says, uh, what major types of marketing intermediaries occupy the sector? It's always important to think about your product. You can't do delivery to every customer in the world, especially if your product is a good and you want to distribute it everywhere. Remember, we talked about intensive marketing where you want to be available everywhere. Yes. We talked about selective, you want to be in those places, but those places, even though they are few in number, maybe in one you know, a territory, but if you want to expand, you need a lot. And the same thing if you want to go uh, you know, on a product that is even exclusive. Uh, that exclusive, you need to find them, identify them, uh, contact them, uh, get the products to them, get the logistics and so on. So here we're talking about this wholesaling, retailing, and uh, how you can make sure you've got this delivery distribution to your customer. We're talking about decisions that these intermediaries take. So we'll look into what this wholesaler is doing, what the retailer is doing. In this uh, chapter, we've got the case for Zara. And uh, Zara has got very clear, uh, we don't want to have wholesalers. And we are going to do retailing from A to Z. In fact, Zara people, they go, they select the place, they set up decoration, all of the inventory, their employees, they train them, their employees, they give them the power, they do the customer service, they answer customer questions. Can you imagine? All of the money inside Zara, inventory, it's all capital by Zara. That's a huge capital. They actually designers. They have the designers. They have the manufacturers of their fashion. You see, that's a big. Uh, but at the same time for Zara, this was their business case. We will take it from A to Z. We make sure our customers get the products we want them. We want to give them 52 different styles in one year. Do you, can you imagine? That's a lot. And uh, what are the major trends with marketing intermediaries? So we will talk about the new intermediaries. The internet has changed. The global environment has changed how uh, distribution works. And what does the uh, future hold for private label brands? So we'll talk about private labels. You guys know what's a private label? Private label, they also call it sometimes white label. And sometimes the, uh, and the example of a white label Let's say if I am a supermarket, or let's say Alam al Saydala, they decided to have a banado, that's Alam al Saydala. Mm -hmm. This way they distribute, they already have the branches, and now they own the brand. This way when the customer walks in, the customer knows that the best value is the Alam al Saydala, because they are the distributors. And of course, they will not risk their distribution channel for a low quality brand. Then probably they have some sort of a value added. And for Alam al they make more money because they can control the promotion, control advertising, availability. They can provide more customer service, training their employees for their own, and therefore they make more profit margin per unit. So these are the topics we will discuss in this chapter. Uh, we're talking about retailing, uh, the definition, all the activities in selling goods services directly to the final consumer for uh, personal and non-business use. So uh, as a keyword, it's not for a business. It's more for the end consumers. Uh, we're talking about types. We've got this limited service. So if you go into the store, you walk in here, maybe you will find someone to answer questions. Maybe not. Self-service, no one by default will answer your questions. You see inside a supermarket, whatever you like, you take. Drop it in your cart, you go. We have this full service. Anyone have been to a fancy restaurant? You just sit. Someone will bring the food, they will bring the utensils, they will bring the, you know, order. You want dessert, they will follow up. You want to, they give you the receipt, they take the money from you. It's a full service. And we've got the self-selection. You know, where self-selection, you know, it's got some assistant there. They can help you and to select which one is best. You know, we've got those three types, and then they may help you, the differences between those. 
Uh, next, we've got here the major types of uh, store retailers. Specialty store. These people very specialize the body shop. They only do personal care products. Uh, department store. They've got different departments. Some departments will do different things. Supermarket. You guys know as a supermarket. You go, you shop. Your uh, groceries, maybe. Or... Convenience store is like smaller. If you go to a 7-Eleven, they're available everywhere. They're small. They got all of the things that are convenient goods. Uh, drug store, you know, you go to Alam al you go to CVS. Inside there, you will find all types of medication, doctors. Uh, you can do, uh, sometimes you have self-service, sometimes you do self-service. Discount store, here these people, they sell on a discount. Here we've got extreme discount stores. So these people, they will sell even lower, very cheap products. Sometimes they sell cheap products or very low price products. Off price retailers, these people, you go to a factory outlook for Nike, you find Nike stuff that the normal stores don't normally uh, sell, but you know, it's, uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, maybe produced in high quality or high quantity and it wasn't you know, marketed or stopped or, so they put it in the factory outlet. Super stores like huge supermarkets and a catalog show, showroom, uh, that's when you have, uh, you know, you choose from a catalog. Uh, next we've got here non-store retailing. This is the automated vending machine. You put your credit card, you get a ticket. Direct selling, someone knocks on your door, they call you by phone, hey, we've got this new product. Direct marketing. Anyone know Farah? No, no, there's a, on Facebook, there's Farah page. Farah yeah, Farah accessories. How many people know Farah accessories? All of the females, they know it. They spend a lot of money advertising on Facebook, sponsored ads, for females only. If you're a male, you have no idea what is Farah accessories. If you're a female... You know, they have over, I don't know, a million follower only from Yemen, Facebook. Amazing business. But they do direct. And they've got this buying services where you can actually buy a service. <coughs> uh, here we're talking about corporate retailing. Uh, we talked about a corporate chain store. You know, like you have uh, a corporate uh, a chain store, let's say Gap stores. Uh, you have uh, volunteer, uh, voluntary chains, uh, let's say, uh, uh, when if, if, let's say the grocers that, uh, you know, uh, maybe potato producers decided to get together. That would be an example of a voluntary chain. Uh, we've got this retailer cooperative, and the retailer uh, cooperative, uh, that's where, uh, uh, let's say, maybe all of those uh, people who sell hardware or spare parts decided to get together and uh, start to sell. Uh, consumer cooperatives, uh, we're talking about some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, members get together, uh, get money, and uh, now they can purchase something together, or uh, they can, uh, you know, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, maybe those labor unions will, can be considered the consumer cooperatives. Every time where consumers themselves, they can get together and make a decision together maybe vote together or buy together. The idea is that they, these people, they get together and they become some sort of a, a momentum in uh, business. And then we've got this franchise organizations. You guys know Pizza Hut? It's like a franchise. Uh, and merchandising conglomerates. Uh, those people, uh, let's say they decide to do, to, let's say they... Uh, they first fight the goods. Yeah, let's say they uh, they get together, they uh, combine diversified uh, retailing lines, they form under some sort of a one ownership. The idea of these is that let's get together, become stronger. You see, let's say Tadal Muzarin al Yemenian. They can get together and they want to buy trucks, they can buy trucks in a better deal. Uh, they want to sell some of their stuff, they can do it on a better uh, scale. So, some sort of a getting together. Uh, and here is for merchandising, more purchasing. Uh, and here we've got this uh, franchise uh, uh, pays. Uh, 
the franchise business has been uh, highly developing. You know, we've got a mother company and then everyone, they follow the same rules and procedures. And in a franchise, they have a contract where it's set specifically. This is the menu, this is the ingredients, this is the recipe, this is the... Uh, so maybe, you know, the franchisee, you pay royalty. You know what's royalty? You know, if you want to open a pizza hut, you have to pay 10% of your revenues to Pizza Hut. This way you cover their cost. Okay. You see, if you want to have Mufan Peak name on inside your hotel, then you have to pay Mufan Peak, you know, some money, royalty. And instead, what you get in uh, reverse, you get a well-known brand name. People, they see Mufan Peak, they know what to expect. And you get a developed system, you know, which is how they manage, how they operate. Uh, anyone have been to a Mufan Peak University, they teach you how to do the bed for, you know, for your room. They have some very interesting uh, projects. Next, we've got reta uh, new retail environments, and this talks about the new. We've got those non-store competition. And as we said, if you go today to Sakhr Street, which is a street that sells computer accessories, Maybe 10 years from now, no one will go there anymore because online electronics are much cheaper, more available, bigger variety, and easy. Why should I? I want a hard disk. I don't care. Why should I go spend two hours and find a hard disk? Just go online, hard disk. I will see all the prices, all of the capacity. I choose one. It's delivered. You see? And most probably, it will be cheaper than if I go to the store because some of these... You know, they are, uh, you know, on a, on a better uh, uh, cost basis. We have also global uh, retailers. I mean, Zara Case was an example of a brand that is going global. And now it is facing challenges. How can I stay global? If you look at H&M, they go on a very low uh, level. So maybe their chances of global is better. Do you see? So now for Zara, what do they need to do to... Uh, you know, to find this new uh, retail environment. And we've got this new forms, you know, those retailing, you know, we see now gas stations, they have a convenience store. There is a, you know, a car wash next to it, uh, in front of it, a, coffee, a Starbucks or a coffee shop. And, you know, across the road, there is always a bank that you can, ATM machine. Uh, and we've got here this giant retailers that are becoming big and big. You know, if you see this, uh, what is it? You go to Carrefour and, uh, you know, you can buy your uh, car spare parts and you buy your animal uh, pet uh, food and all the way to uh, furniture. furniture. You know, we become very giant. Anyone have been to Lulu uh, Hypermarket, you know, and how what they're doing there? Uh, marketing the decisions, you need to make a decision regarding your customer service, your target market, uh, what channels you want to address and what prices. Uh, you want uh, your marketing decisions, uh, how you want to communicate inside the store, maybe outside, what atmosphere you want to keep. Remember, uh, you know, we talked about uh, Gap. They really care about the atmosphere inside. You see, uh, you know, he talked about how Zara, they will... Actually, the employee will make sure they handle the stuff to you because they have been requested to do that. Uh, anyone have been to an Apple store? They keep it open. Anyone, you are w very welcome to come and try their stuff. Yeah. They have a lot of iPads there. Laptops. Some people come play. Some people sit to play solitaire. Uh, you know, your wife is shopping and you're tired. Just sit with us. Enjoy so that's another decision in your uh, retail uh, locations. Private label, here we're talking about low cost, you know, uh, you know, advertising inside the store, sales promotion, you know all of your competitors, and you are doing distribution, you can make high profit margin. And uh, here are some of the top ones, milk, okay? And all of these, you can see they are more like commodities. You see people buy every day, and those grocery shops, they just have it as a private label. Now we move to wholesaling. Activities in selling goods, services. Buy for, that's the keyword, resale or business use. So we've got merchant wholesalers. These, they take title. And we also have brokers and agents. And these, they facilitate 
buying and selling and they earn some percentage commission and we've got those specialized they're only in agriculture or in petroleum links on the merchants we've got two types one is full one is limited the full they do one carry stock two maintain sales force three finance credit uh four delivery so actually they have trucks Five, they have management assistance, maybe training. The limited, they don't have all the five. They have four, three, two, one, or one. Do you see? So here, either maybe they have limited line, maybe they have truck, that's it. Maybe they drop, they do delivery only. Maybe they do uh, racks or they finance. Maybe they do mail orders, so they use some other company for delivery. So that's what we mean by limited service. Uh, we talked about, let's say, a Josie will go to the supermarket, put the stuff, and collect the money after the customer pays. So they do finance, do you see? They provide cash advance, and they don't collect until the customer buys. Next, we've got here wholesaler functions. They sell, they promote, they warehouse, they do bulk breaking. So, uh, you know, a wholesaler, they will buy, you know, one ton and then they will break it into quarter, 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 each quarter with another retailer, maybe. And they also do buying assortment buildings. Uh, wholesaler also, they do transportation, finance, we talked about, risk bearing, so they're responsible if something goes wrong, management services, training, and they provide information for the market both ways. Information for the retailer how to sell and information for the manufacturer, you know, how to supply. Uh, supply chain management is you, you get a supply chain from raw material, manufactured, delivered to the store. So that's now the third topic in this chapter, which is logistics. Logistics is very important. You want to have transportation. You want to make sure you trade it off, you know, more cost in logistics. If you are late in delivery, there is a cost to it. You're quick, there is a cost to it. And you need to have in, uh, logistics systems. This is becoming very powerful, the information technology. You know, if you go to Alam al they tell you, okay, if you go to uh, Alam al number four, they have two. You see, they have this information technology where they know how much inventory they have. And then we've got here, uh, how is the order processed? Did you see this uh, on Amazon? One click uh, button order. This they got actually a trade. They got a, what is it? A uh, uh, they got a uh, patent. Amazon, they have a patent. They have made this one click buy button. You click it once, it's bought. You remember, add to cart, check out. Enter your name, your credit card information. Yeah. Where is the shipping address to? Are you sure? Revise your check, send, check your email, authorize. So they removed all of this. One click, it's purchased because they have all the information there. So that's in one way how this order processing is becoming. Warehouse locations, where are you located? And you know, if you make an order, do you know if you go to, let's say you order a book from Amazon, they will actually ship it to you from the nearest warehouse. Yes, so sometimes, you know, you, you know, I once ordered a, a DVD and it arrived here next day, two days. It must have come from, I don't know, maybe from the office here down the streets. Do you see? They had the inventory there. But probably the inventory level, uh, uh, here inventory level, what inventory, how much you keep and how much you, you know, we talked about ERP systems, they help you with that. And uh, here determining optimal order, what is the best quantity you should keep that will give you the lowest cost per unit, which is the cost of processing and cost of ordering. And here we're talking about some organizational lessons. Uh, you need to have an IT department maybe, uh, you want to keep inventory, your good relationship with your suppliers. Sometimes, can you live without your uh, distributor? No. Do you think al Kremi for money exchange can live without their, you know, uh, point of sale or partners or agents? They will not survive. Do you guys know Western Union? 
they have more point of sale they have more points of sale than McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut, uh, Burger King, and Domino's combined. Wow. If you combine all of these, what's it at more? You have a lot of point of sale. Each point of sale allow you. Do you know how many we have here in Hadda Street? Yes, sir. You know, maybe 20 Western Union points. That's the end of this chapter. Any questions?